my friends, having recently traveled from Canada to South Africa and back, I want to talk about this. In total, my trip included four long haul flights and three shorter flights. And these things that I'm going to talk about happened way too frequently. I'm sure some of them bother all civilized travelers, but some of them might only bug me because of my autistic having to have things a certain way thing. Okay, number one, people going over their carry-on allowance. We've all heard that airports around the world are having major check baggage issues. Luggage is getting lost. It's taking forever to get onto the carousels. I've heard stories of entire plane loads of people not getting their bags when they land. So a lot of people are trying to get around this by only taking carry-on baggage, and they're taking way too much of it. Either an extra bag or the bag they take is freaking huge. None of the airlines seem to be doing a great job of enforcing carry-on bag limits. And what ends up happening is that the overhead bins fill up really fast. And by the time you board, you cannot find a space anywhere for your one little bag that's just too big to go under the seat in front of you. Don't do it, people. For a start, it's inconsiderate. There should be enough space in the bins for every passenger to place a bag. And secondly, it defeats the goal you were trying to accomplish because half of the carry-on bags end up having to be checked anyway. Number two, being rude to people who refuse to switch seats. A lot of people seem to have this attitude that those who are traveling alone are obligated to switch seats if asked so that traveling companions can be seated together. Now, on just about every airline in the world, you have the option of checking in online a full day before the flight and choosing your seat. Most airlines give you the option to pay a bit extra to select your seat well ahead of time. I usually take this option. I'm traveling again in December and my seats are already selected and booked. I paid for that. And I am not going to give up the window or aisle seat that I paid for so that I can be squished into a middle seat. I will trade for an equivalent seat. So I'll switch a window for a window or an aisle for an aisle. But if I paid to be in a particular kind of seat, I'm not going to move to a seat that's not at least as good. That does not make me rude. It does not make me uncooperative. It does not make me difficult. It just means I am asserting my right to something that, again, I paid for. I get that not everyone can prepay for specific seats, and I get that the seats you may want are no longer available by the time you check in. That should not be turned into somebody else's problem. Number three, reclining your seat the second you get on the plane. So you get on a plane, and before you've even got your seatbelt on, the person in front of you sits down and reclines their seat all the way so fast that you almost get slapped in the face by the onboard entertainment system. Yes, I get it. Airplane seats are not all that comfortable, especially if you have to sit there for 12 hours. The only way to get a bit of sleep is to recline your seat, but could you please just wait for a little bit? At least until the dinner has been served, even if you don't plan to eat yourself. The person behind you wants to have enough space to eat without accidentally choking on their plastic cutlery. Flight attendants on some airlines have started asking passengers to keep their seats upright during meal services. And I'm so grateful for that. Number four, arguing with the airport security person. Airport security is a pain in the ass. One of the things I find most inconvenient is that the rules aren't the same from one airport to the next. Sometimes you have to take out your laptop. Sometimes you also have to take out your iPad. Sometimes you don't have to take out anything. Some of them want you to take off your shoes or your watch or your belt, others don't. So if the person in front of me is taking a long time because they're trying to figure out what the hell they're supposed to be doing, I don't mind that. We're all in this together. We're all confused. Solidarity and all that. What grinds my gears, though, is when someone in the line starts arguing with the security person. I don't see why I have to take my laptop out of the bag. Why should I take my belt off? My pants will fall down. All of these rules are ridiculous and I'm not taking off my watch. Just do what you're being asked to do so the rest of us can get through security and move on and those security people are just doing their jobs i'm pretty sure they don't get paid enough to be dealing with that kind of bullshit number five using the seat in front of you as leverage here's the scenario the airplane is cruising the meal service is over your meal has been cleared away and you've just gotten settled you've picked out a movie to watch you're reading a book maybe you've even drifted off to sleep and the person sitting behind you gets up to go to the washroom and they pull themselves up using the back of your seat. And you find yourself suddenly being pulled backward. And then when the person releases the seat, you shoot forward quickly enough to get whiplash. I'm sure this would be uncomfortable for anyone, but for my autistic self, it is sensory hell to have my body yanked around like that. 
It's like I lose my sense of where I am in space. It's such a disconcerting feeling for me that for most of my flights, I book seats that don't have a seat behind them. So right up against a wall or partition. Number six, being late for boarding. This one should be obvious. If you've checked in for a flight, please show up to the boarding gate on time. If you've checked a bag and you haven't boarded the plane, the airline and all of its passengers will wait for you. If you don't show up to board, ground staff will have to go through all of the bags that have been loaded onto the plane and identify which bags belong to you so they can get them off the plane. They do this for security reasons because they don't want unaccompanied bags to be on the plane. That takes time. Everyone on the plane just wants to get going. The passengers, the flight attendants and the pilots. Number seven, trying to force a conversation with an unwilling passenger. If you're an extrovert and you strike up a conversation with a fellow passenger who is happy to chat, great! If the person sitting beside you is wearing earbuds or reading a book, they probably don't feel like engaging in conversation, and you shouldn't try to insist on it. If you do try to insist on it and the person continues to read or listen to music or watch TV, don't try to claim that they're being rude. You're the one being rude because you are invading that person's mental space. For some people, conversations with strangers are torture. Introverts can experience very real anxiety if someone tries to force them into a conversation, especially in a setting where you cannot just get up and walk away. Number eight, standing up the moment the plane gets to the gate. At the end of the flight, when the plane is at the gate, the second you hear that ding when the seatbelt sign goes off, 99% of the people on the plane stand up and start jostling for space in the aisles and opening up the overhead bins to get their stuff out. You might be thinking that this doesn't impact people like me who choose to stay seated, but do the math. At every row, you have four or five people trying to fit into an aisle that's barely wide enough for one. Where do all those people go? They are forced to encroach into the space of the people who have stayed seated, and they're trying to wrestle their oversized bags out of the overhead bins from an impossible angle. If I had a dollar for every time I've almost been brained by bags falling out of the overhead bins, I'd be able to afford my own private jet. Standing up the second the plane stops is not going to get you off the plane any faster. I will say this, when I flew domestically in South Africa, the flight attendants required passengers to stay seated. If you try to stand up, you would be ordered to sit. And the flight attendants moved through the cabin, letting two rows disembark at a time. It was orderly, no one was at risk of getting their head smashed in by someone's bag, and I think it was quicker than the mass chaos that you usually see. If any airline employees are watching, I 100% recommend this approach. Number nine, standing almost on top of the baggage carousel. So now you're off the plane, yay! You've gone through passport control, now you just have to get your check bags. So you grab a cart and join 300 of your closest friends at the carousel. Now the bags haven't even made it off the plane yet, but you and your cart are right up against the carousel, leaning forward so you can see all the way down, even though the carousel isn't even moving. So anyone who is standing further down than you are has no hope of being able to see or pick up their bags when the luggage starts coming out. It's not necessary to stand right on top of the carousel in order to get your bags. Everyone should stand back a little so that the people who do see their bags can quickly step forward, grab their bags and step back again. And if it is obvious that a fellow passenger has seen their bag, please move back a little to give them space to pick it up. Number 10, not getting out of the way once you have your bags. While we're on the subject of baggage, here's the scenario that happened when I returned to Canada a couple of weeks ago. I was with my son and we had four check bags between us. The baggage handling situation in Toronto is a bit ridiculous right now. And the bags only started coming out onto the carousel two hours after landing and they came out on a different carousel to the one indicated on the display boards. People were tired, people were cranky, everyone was impatient. I had been traveling for about 35 hours at this point and I just wanted to get the hell out of there. I was not right in front of the carousel. There was a layer of people in front of me waiting to get their bags and I had to wait for them to move on so I could move forward. But when they got their bags and loaded them onto their cart, they then took their sweet ass time opening handbags, putting passports away, digging for phones, taking off jackets and shoving them into bags. Once you have your bag, you need to move away from the carousel. You don't even have to go far. Just step back so other people can step forward and do all of your faffing around when you're out of everyone's way. So those are my 10 things that airplane passengers do that annoy me. Do you agree with me or am I just getting salty in my old age? What are your travel pet peeves? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see what it was like traveling during the height of the pandemic, watch this video right here. I'll see you all next time. Remember, live your best life and be kind.
Bye.